let's look at the section on vectors. So what is a vector? Well, you should know if you saw Despicable Me, right? Let's see. Hey. I'm applying for a new villain loan. Go by the name of Vector. It's a mathematical term, a quantity represented by an arrow with both direction and magnitude. Vector! That's me, because I'm committing crimes with both direction and magnitude. Oh yeah! It's good, right? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Vector! Direction, magnitude, there you go. So a quantity that is determined by both its magnitude and direction. Um, the direction is represented by an arrow. The magnitude is represented by the length of the line. So longer line has more magnitude. And then of course the arrowhead will indicate the direction. So you might have an example of an, air, an aircraft, arrow points direction of movement. The length of the arrow is the magnitude or speed. Okay, so if it speeds up, we lengthen the arrow. Um, if it changes direction, we change our arrowhead the way it's pointing. And so geometrically, if we look at a line that contains two points, and then if I cut off and just look at the actual line segment here, okay, so I cut off the actual arrows, this gives me the line segment, PQ. And then with my directed line segment now is I have an initial point and then I have a terminal point. So this gives my vector. So all, all it is is the big key is that the length of the line is the magnitude. So the magnitude of the directed line segment is the distance from point P to point Q. So the, vectors, the vector V whose magnitude is zero is called the zero vector and it's assigned no direction. If I, and, and typically you'll either see an arrow written above like this above a vector or they'll be bolded. I know it's kind of hard to bold in your notes um, unless you want to sit there and write over and over and over, but typically in, in, I, you'll see me write arrows over it. So two vectors are equal. So these two vectors are equal if they have the same magnitude, so the length of the lines are the, are the same, and the same direction. If I want to add vectors, notice if I'm adding V plus W. Okay, so I have my initial point, I go to my magnitude of V, then I go my magnitude of W, and then adding these two would give me a new vector. Vector addition is commutative. Always. Every time I see that word, I think of the teacher that used to call it commutative. So commutative. Um, so in other words, if I add V plus W, that's the same as adding W plus V. I get the same vector. There are also associative, meaning that if I group, that's always we think of the word associative. If I group and I add V plus W first, so not notice I'm doing this down here, okay, where I'm adding and then I add U to it, I'm gonna still get the same um, value. In other words, if I do U plus V first and then I add the W to it, I get to the same place. If we add the zero vector to a particular vector, we just get the vector back. Okay, so this looks normal addition stuff, but it's important to understand that these are vectors the, if you add the negative, it just simply changes the direction. Okay, the magnitude stays the same, but you change direction. Um, if we have two vectors and we wanna find the difference, then what we actually do is we add vector V to the change the direction of vector W. So notice here we have V, we have W. If I want to take V and add a negative vector w, I would reverse my direction, and so you can see that would be my final result. If I want to multiply by a number, we call this a scalar, like in other words, two times vector v, 
it's it sounds just exactly what is meaning is that remember this is magnitude so I'm multiplying the magnitude by 2 if I multiply it by a negative value okay so remember that um, actually is going to reverse the direction so here all this is saying is if alpha my scalar the product alpha times a vector um, whose magnitude is alpha times the magnitude of the vector and whose direction is the same. If it's less than zero, so like this one here, the magnitude is still the same, um, but we change the direction. If um, alpha equals zero, or if I have the vector zero, and I multiply these two, of course, I'd get zero. And you've heard probably your entire life um, you know, the force equals, <coughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> the force equals mass times acceleration. This is actually a vector, a force vector, and we'll talk about force vectors um, in here as well. So scalar products have the following properties. Zero times um, a particular vector is the vector zero. One times a vector, you get the vector back. Negative one, so this, this line's like what I just showed with the scalars. And then if I have grouping here, alpha plus beta, to, so two scalars, I can um, simply distribute these and multiply both vectors by them. Same thing here. If I have a scalar, I can multiply both vectors by that scalar. And then finally, I can multiply the two scalars and then multiply by the particular vector. If I want to graph vectors, so in other words, if I want to figure out how to graph V minus vector W. Okay, so in other words, I'm going to draw here, so I need, need color. And so I can say, well, I have vector V, but then minus W, so I'm going to go the opposite way. Okay, so that would be opposite, as you can see right there. All right, if I want to do two times vector V, so in other words, I'm going to change the magnitude two times the size, and then three times vector W, then I get two times vector V, three times, and this gives me my new vector, my resultant. Typically, we call this because it's the result of these two vectors. And then finally, the last one, I take two times, two times um, V, I reverse the direction of vector W, and then I add on vector u. All right, so it takes just a little practice. Probably the biggest thing is reversing the direction when you see the negative. Uh, we have the different properties. Magnitude, we keep talking about the length of the line is the magnitude. Um, the magnitude is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so if we have a vector, uh, magnitudes are always positive. So you can kind of think of this as absolute value. If the magnitude, the magnitude can only equal zero if this vector equals zero. And here we can actually pull the scalar value out front and then find the magnitude and then multiply it. Okay, so kind of an overview in words of what all, all these mean. Uh, properties of our magnitude is given all of these properties, then we can actually find a vector u, which is called the unit vector. The unit vector, of course, unit equals one. I also have a position vector that starts at zero. And so if I start at zero and I go a certain direction, a certain magnitude, then we write this as an algebraic vector. Okay, I don't know why they didn't use x and y, but they use a and b where A and B are real numbers, are scalar, and these are called the components. Don't forget that, write that down. These are called the components because you'll be asked to find the actual components. And so <clears throat> if I have this theorem, it says, suppose I have this vector V has an initial point X1, Y1, and doesn't necessarily have to be at the origin, then I can actually pick it up and move it to the origin to turn it into a position vector. All right, so I just rapidly went through all of that, um, a lot of definitions with vectors, and then we'll get started actually working with them in the next lecture.